Spice. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Okay. Right. My name is Olaf Banki. I'm going to speak something about uh, Checklist Bank. Checklist Bank has been a project in the um, uh, GBIF uh, work program. Um, can I get to the next slide? It doesn't seem to work for me. Okay. Thanks. Um, uh, Checklist Bank got launched in uh, uh, December 2020, um, and it was a project of various partners, including Catalog of Life and GBEF, um, uh, that co-developed it. Um, so it's basically an open data repository for taxonomic and nomenclatural data, but it also holds checklists uh, of uh, policy relevance, uh, for example. Um, it contains tools for, harmoni for comparing and harmonizing species checklists. Um, and it contains all the assembly tooling that we need to build uh, the Catalog of Life checklist, uh, a global list of uh, all described species of all life on Earth. So uh, what I want to do today is to um, show you something about the tools, the front-end tools that we have uh, to compare lists uh, with one another. So um, what I'm going to say is also in a tutorial, this is called the Checklist Bank tutorial. You can find them in a, a GBIF, uh, I would say, a course repository. So just type in Checklist Bank tutorial, you will find it online. So um, during the bicycle project, we actually uh, enhanced Checklist Bank um, uh, after its launch. And I'm going to show you uh, what this repository is about, uh, how you can find a data set, how you can search across data sets for a name usage, um, then also how you can do a bit of name matching in the front end, and how you can compare data sets uh, uh, to one another. Um, so here we are going to dive into Checklist Bank. So normally I would just have typed it, but now you get a bunch of mock-ups. Sorry for that. Um, so uh, if you see the menu on the left-hand side, uh, you can see that we sort of sorted out all uh, Catalog of Live releases because otherwise we're cluttering all the data sets. So if you're interested in that, you can go straight to all the monthly editions and annual editions that we are producing. Another possibility is that you search for data sets in Checklist Bank. You can explore all, or you can um, explore a specific uh, data set. In this case, worldwide wattle. Um, if you press on it, you can see metadata about this data set. And this is a source done by Bruce Maslin of uh, Western Australian Herbarium. It's one of the sources underpinning the Catalog of Life checklist. If you go to the download, you can see that you can actually download this data set in various formats. First of all, you can go to the original archive so you can see what originally got submitted to Checklist Bank. And then you have ver various options. You can go to Doran Core Archive, you can get it in a text tree uh, download, or in CallDP, or some other for format. Or you can get it in um, an Excel file if you, if you wanted to. Now, if we go to the cross dataset search, Say the, it's the use case that you want to figure out which sources actually use this, uh, this species name. And I'm a tree lover. I'm sorry about that. But that's why I typed in this Arnacardiaceae. It's a new species from China that um, was found last year or described and published last year in March. So if we type in this uh, species, you can see 
you can actually go to the Platzi feed that Donut, uh, sorry, that Donut produced, but Lubo was talking about. And um, so this is something that Platzi, um, how do you say, mediates or publishes to Checklist Bank through. Um, and the interesting bit is that you can go from here also to the occurrence record in GBIF. And for example, you can go to the original publication and, and, and check there. So this is just a demonstration to show you that from Checklist Bank, you can link out to uh, quite many sources. What you can also do is go to the verbatim data, so the original data. So in case you spot an error or, or something like that, you can actually start to check, was that in the original data, yes or no? Now, another uh, possibility is to do name matching in the front end. Um, all functionality that you see is actually built off an API. So the API has much more functions than the front end does. But there are three ways you can do name matching. You can either type in some names into a box and start looking for a data set you want to compare it with. Or you can upload your custom, your own CSV and match it to a particular list. Or you can choose a data set in Checklist Bank 2 and start comparing them. Now, for this example, I just type in a bunch of fleas. And these fleas are coming from a source Parhost, uh, which uh, is an old data source that Catalog of Life used. And we're going to match it to a new data source that we, I would say, this year uh, got into the Catalog of Life checklist. And what you get here is you get the names that you provided from Parhost that you typed in, and they're matched against um, uh, the second column, which come from this new uh, Lewis list of fleas that we have. And I never know if I show these examples, what's a good example to show for? In this case, 100% match, but maybe you're not happy with that and you wanted to see something you know, that wasn't matching. I say, try it out for yourself. Now, one of the things you should know is that there are also functions that are behind the login. So most of the tools that I've shown you right now, you can access without logging in. Uh, to Checklist Bank. But uh, now I'm going to show you a function where we say you have to log in because it requires quite some performance. The login is actually a GBIF account. So if you don't have it, just register at GBIF and then you can use your account here. So this is what it looks like when you log in. Um, here, what I've done is I go again to the same flea data sets and start comparing them uh, to one another. The nice thing about this data set comparison is that immediately you can see metrics uh, of uh, the differences between those lists. So it's just a quick way of getting some sense of how lists are differing from, from one another. And just to be clear, uh, you can actually select a particular taxonomic rank from two uh, data sets that you want to investigate. One step further is actually going into uh, what we know uh, call a diff viewer. Uh, basically, it tells you, uh, gives you a red column and a green column. These stand for uh, the two data sets, and it's it's a um, it's a minus plus comparison. So. The red gives you what is lacking from the green data set, and the green data set is giving you a plus what's not present in the other. And sometimes um, what you can see is that the difference is that a genus name is there, but in one data set it doesn't have an author, and in the other one it has. So it's just a, uh, a tool that you can go into the nitty gritty. Um, not sure how am I doing for time. Okay, so sorry that I hope I didn't go too fast on you, <laughs> but if I did, then please come. Uh, like I say, uh, what you see here is the complete pipeline of um, how data sets are entering Checklist Bank and how um, 
we use checklist bank tooling to assemble uh, data sets into a catalog of live checklist. What you need to know is that checklist bank has almost 50,000 uh, data sources uh, currently in, uh, in checklist bank. Most of them are really coming in through Platzi and they're growing with about uh, 700 to 1,000 uh, a month. So um, uh, there's really rich content in there. Um, so it's, um, I would always say to people, start exploring it um, and uh, give us your feedback of what you see. This is work in progress. Uh, and so all the feedback that you give to us, um, we're interested in, um, I say, hearing it and um, uh, doing something with it. So here's my last slide. It's just if you want to find some information, um, I give you the API. Um, there's a tutorial that I said, that's the checklist bank tutorial. We got an API mailing list. Um, so like I told you, all functionality that you see is built off the API. So the API is the, has the richest functionality. And um, you can also follow us on, on GitHub. Everything we do is completely open. Uh, so uh, if you're savvy enough to do something in GitHub, you can actually become part of the conversation. Thanks very much. So questions or comments on your side? Maybe there are some questions on the chat. Does someone follow that? On screen? Oh. They were just there on screen? No. Can we visualize the chat on screen somehow? Don't be shy posing a question. I can't believe I was that clear. <laughs> Yeah, you do. So this is all new to me. So this might be a very basic question. Once people put checklists in the checklist bank, does that automatically mean that you use that for the catalog of life? Or does it have to be curated by others before that information is then added into catalog of life? Yeah, that's a very good question. So uh, one of the things that I didn't tell you about in this, uh, but we had a talk about it yesterday, mm -hmm. is that we are making this extended release of the Catalog of Life checklist. We b basically try to augment the current 165 databases that we use to construct the Catalog of Life checklist. We try to mine data from Checklist Bank uh, into this extended release so to fill taxonomic gaps to add names etc etc so it's not the answer is not all lists in checklist bank will immediately be ending up in the gold checklist but i think as we progress uh we'll we'll probably evaluate uh lists and if you have a particular taxonomic gap you're thinking of yeah. then uh ring the bell to us <laughs> then uh diana and camilla that uh, those are the call edit editors that deal with this extended release they will evaluate lists and see if they add anything uh to that extension okay thank you very much that's yep yeah. yep answers my question perfect thank you Maybe the discussion should also be broadcasted. I don't know, but uh... well, we couldn't see uh, anything from Oh. Uh, Can I? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Great talk. Yeah. Um. I also recently only learned about checklist actually a couple of months ago, and I think it's really a great initiative. Especially I like the part you know you try to harmonize names, and I remember also was just looking at. Uh, data set I was interested in and how you deal with um, communication between um, people who like submit you know data for the checklist or 
and if there are inconsistencies there or you know some problem that were found like how we can approach and fix those like you mean you know? if you are the one submitting the data or if you see spot an issue well from either way else? if we spotted the issue you know um how do we report like how do we communicate yeah. you know what should uh, Obviously, this is a challenge. Um, uh, if there are sources that are used in the catalog of live checklist at the moment, we would, uh, how say, uh, send those issues to the the original data custodian and 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 see if they can get fixed. In some cases, there might be other options that that we have. Um, we still need to start to embark to do it for every list in checklist bank and so that's progress but you can always um, either email us or leave a github issue uh, so in the github uh, uh, repository we have several repositories in the catalog of live domain and one is really targeted to data sets and you can actually go to to the data sets that we use and leave an issue yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Who is responsible? We have to continue with the next, uh, I would say, quite impressive service created in Bicycle. This is the architecture and uh, pilot infrastructure for digital specimens presented by Wouter Edding from Naturalis. And this 